bought a bunch of random comics very recently. Jimmy, want to go through some of them? Sounds good to me. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Like I said, man, scooped up a whole bunch of uh, comics from... Happened to be my uh, my sixth grade math teacher, Jimmy. That's bizarre. There was a little uh, initiative done in town. Uh, there was a yard sale, community yard sale stuff, and 70 houses participated. And I went to about 20 houses starting at 8 a.m. Nothing. Bup kiss, as they say, man. Came home, and on the Facebook page for the event, somebody posts, come to such and such address, video games, comics, and I'm like, be there in a couple of seconds. I popped it on the Google Maps, because I wasn't exactly familiar with the street, three blocks away, a place where I actually didn't know there was a street, hmm. thought it was uh, no outlet, and uh, it turns out, like I said, it was my uh, sixth grade math teacher, Mr. Wellman, who, when I was in his class uh he would have those comic buyers guides on the back window of the of, of the classroom and he would be going through those like whenever <laughs> we were supposed to have our heads down doing work uh he said um you know i got 30 boxes of of the stuff that i that's mine and when i saw these three boxes like i didn't see any of those so like those were kind of tucked away I am curious. I am too, because if he's going through Comics Buyer's Guide, like, I like to imagine he's like mail ordering and really putting together a collection. Yeah, but... and and uh, we'll we'll go through this, and you and you'll see that uh, like he he takes he takes care of his stuff, man. But uh, these boxes that I bought were from the aughts, and it was the same kind of thing as when I was a kid, man. Completely ignorant, um, and we'll go to flea markets. And give a guy eight dollars a box. I, my pops is good for that. Like, uh, oh, you don't want to take this back home. Like, how many did you sell here uh, this weekend? I'll give you eight dollars, and the people are just like, yeah, get it out of my life. So, so uh, you build knowledge with that. I was broke in the odds. I was starting my comics career, and uh, if you remember, this might be like just too subtle a thing, but we hung out every Wednesday. You and I, and Tom, and some others. And we'd go to a coffee shop, and I was so broke that I would bring a bottle of water from home to just drink while I hang out with you guys because I couldn't even afford the coffee. You know what I mean? So I was not buying comics that much. I wasn't spending more than like a quarter for a comic, <laughs> pretty much, for years, until I, until, I got, uh, until I got going. So... None of these comics are really doubles for me. That's exciting. I, you know, we, we've, again, talked a little bit about this ahead of time. I'm excited because, like, I wasn't buying a lot of this stuff. Right. You know, I'm assuming this is kind of your mainstream Marvel, DC, Image, Dark yeah. Horse kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is, like, my taste was moving away from that. Totally. So these will be books that I probably may know of, yeah. but have not really read. And to an extent, I got these for the good of the channel. Yes. Because I don't know what's what's dope. I, fun, I don't man. know what to explore. New blood. So I need the kayfabe audience in the comments to tell us what future episodes should yes. be. Yes, 100%. Uh, I, I have some sense of some future things to hustle and sell. So like... I would request this as a future episode. Me too. And you would call it something like... Uh, J. Scott Campbell's Last Stand or something. Yes. Uh, we see variant covers. This is two copies of issue number one. Were there... Well, I don't know if you know this. Two issues are all I know of for this book. Right. So again, uh, K. Faber's out there. Fill us in if we're missing some, some information there. But J. Scott Campbell, an artist that I enjoyed... And yeah. at this point, it was weird, but you see him doing a lot of digital stuff, so that could be fun. Mike Turner's Superman... Interesting. With a I, I, I've bought some uh, Mike Turner recently. Very and then, intriguing. To and me. then there's stuff like you know Dark X Men. Never heard of it. Mm -mm. Twenty eight days later, six boom. Something wow. tells me that's after the movie. Yeah, I would assume some other shit. X Men Unlimited. Kind of a cool looking cover. Kind of cell shaded, like anime ish looking thing. There's a Kirkman listed on there. Is this a big team up of, of writers? Oh, Is, yeah. Do you think that's a Robert Kirkman? I do, because he, he. Oh, had, Unlimited. They would run like an anthology. And he had an exclusive deal for, for, um, for, with Marvel for a little while. Shouts to Adi Granoff, man. That's my Japanese uh, tourist bud. Like, we were kicking it at Tokyo Comic Con, got some cool sushi together. 
JLA Avengers, Busick, and Perez. Is that the long rumored? Uh, no, it wouldn't be with Busiak. Exactly. Is there. Writer. Right. Interesting. Uh, the most homoerotic yes. cover ever drawn. We interrupt today's video to tell everyone we will be at Baltimore Comic Con September 8th, 9th, and 10th. We also want to remind everyone these videos are brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. There are three levels there that will get you access to our videos ahead of everybody else. And the King Kayfaber level, you'll get all the videos first, and you'll get to sit in on the recording sessions. These videos are also brought to you by the books that we make. Ed Piscor's Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree comics in one handsome volume, along with 140 extra pages, will be out this fall. The proof is here, and it is shipping now to comic book stores and bookstores near you. Put your name on a copy ahead of time if you want to make sure you don't miss out. Red Room, Crypto Killers. The final series of Red Room Comics is now being serialized. Issues 1, 2, and 3 are available. 4 will be out shortly. There are two trade paperbacks of Red Room. They are all self-contained. So buy whichever one you see first and enjoy yourself. X-Men Grand Design is going to be collected, all three volumes, in one oversized volume this fall from Marvel Comics. Put your name on a pre-order for X-Men Grand Design if you want to get that in time for Christmas. My latest books, True Crime Funnies, three nonfiction comics, True Crime and Wrestling Comics. These are available on my website or on my Patreon. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics, collecting eight complete stories of the Deadliest Girl Alive, the Plain Janes for the young reader, young adult reader in your life, and the Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition is available now wherever books and comics are sold. And now back to today's video. Of Wolverine. Yes, it, I remember making fun of this a lot at the time. <laughs> it's props from, from Mark Silvestri. I'm showing that to the King Kayfabers right there. Look at the glutes activated after yoga with Adrian. Yes. Wearing the male stripper, like, cowboy hat. Ripped to shreds. He's going to go to a fucking bachelorette party and fucking make chicks lick whipped cream off of him. <laughs> to, 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 to the tune of She's My Cherry Pie. Listen... That is a that is magic Mike. I don't disagree with any of that. I would be interested in reading this arc. This is the last Grant Morrison X, the new X Men. That was like his conclusion. And I, I, see. I, I'm not sure about it. I think it's like a future, past kind of thing. I think he kind of went through certain of those stories, the classic stories. Right. And I feel like that's what this may be. But it's Mark Silvestri and Grant Morrison doing X Men. Yeah. I would be curious to take a closer look at that. Now I don't know much about this period at all. I never read the Grant Morrison stuff. But everybody says that the Chuck Austin stuff is trite. Dudes are harsh on Chuck Austin. I also did not read it, so I don't know, but I, I do know there was some negative stuff about him online. But now there will be the opportunity to. Super God, Warren Ellis, never heard of it. An Avatar book. There will be a smattering... I of, hope there's a bunch of Avatar books. Of That'd be cool. Terry Moore echoes that, that will show up kind of here and there in the book, in the box. New Avengers, Bendis, don't know anything about it. Jack of Fables. See, there will be these little veins where there'll just be like one issue of something weird. Like, like my 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 teacher was like just giving stuff a, a shot and was like, you know what? I'm not I'm not feeling it. Scott Clark, Wildstorm alumni, uh, work and continuing the work there. More this Jack of Fables. I think I think that uh, my guy is was a big uh, Fables fan, so he's going to grab all the auxiliary. That's a popular book. I think it might have been Vertigo's like last big popular long running series. Dingo, no clue. Demonic. Kirkman doing something with uh, Silvestri. See this pilot season gimmick? I've got a couple of these. And Silvestri draws several of them where they were running like one issue. Of, you know, new characters, new new whatever. And then I think there might have been like vote on who you want to read or maybe it's who sold the most. Right. Um, those could be interesting. And I might have one or two of these that would be different stories but still like Silvestri. And I don't know if Kirkman wrote all of them or not. But Another dingo. Rick Remender. Is that Terry Moore? No, it's, um, oh, shoot. It's it's from Walking Dead. Uh, it's Tony Moore. Tony, Tony Moore. Moore. Oh, my goodness. Apologies yeah, yeah, to Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Incorruptible? Don't know it. This was about, like, the Miller world kind of time, I think, when some of these writers were stretching out. Cinderella from Fabletown? Don't know it. Streets of Gotham? No clue. Black Widow. You know what? There was there were a couple Black Widow series. I don't know this one, although it looks like maybe John Paul Leone is, is the art. But there was one with Bill Sienkiewicz art. Kind of kind of weird because it's hard to keep track. I'll look at those sometimes when I come across them and don't know them. Some kind of Hawkeye comic. Dark Rain, one of those crossovers. Looks like a weird superhero. That's an Avatar. Avatar book for sure. Unmistakable. When there's blood on the cover like that. Yeah. 
Another one of these Mark Way joints. Random issue of Chew. Another. Never read Chew, and that was a series that ran, I think, 30 or very so. Very successful. Yeah. yeah, very successful. Red Robin, no idea. This stuff brings back so many memories. This was the explosive of, like, we got new publishers, we've got weird, like, we're breaking house styles, and it's so chaotic to look at now and try to, like, remember what these were. This was, um... Like a new 52, J.H. Right? Williams III, and the art's really good, the stuff that he was doing. I think he was doing, like, washes in black and white, and he might have been doing full paints, like, full color. Alex Maliev. I like his work. It's kind of strange. That one looks like a painting, like a legit kind of... Yeah. It's probably maybe digital, but... Ed, did you talk to your uh, former teacher whenever uh, this transaction's going down? Oh, totally. You, uh... Like, I was talking with the wife first, and then I was like, is this Mr. Wellman's house? And she's like, yeah, you were a student? She's like, I'll go get him. So he came out, because he knew he supports the books. Like, when I went to his house, all my books are there on the bookshelves cool. and shit like that. It was super, super rad. Uh, so he's he's done, you know? He's, he's done with comics. A dude who's co been collecting them for his whole life... Dude's in his 60s, maybe, and he is tired of the Marvel DC stuff that's being done. He is completely And nothing has replaced it? He's not like, oh, I follow this or that creator? Or... No. Wow. No, he's, he's, he's so kind of, he's like, I don't want to put words in the dude's mouth or something, but it's whack to him at this point. Man, that's fascinating, because I was going to ask, like, what's the stuff, you know? But... J. Michael Straczynski fan. A lot of people are. Is this their original stuff? Man, we got previews, preludes. It's crazy that it's Half like it's issue. a franchise. You know what I mean? Like they have spin-off books and stuff. Like, is this the original number one? I have no idea. The K Fabers will tell us. Never read it, but boy, he's buying all the variants. He's got all the covers. Multiple for copies one. of the same variant covers. Three of this yeah. this one at least. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's what started to get to him. <laughs> it's funny if it's that um, you know the completest thing of like he can't stop himself, right? <laughs> but man, multiples go of the same stuff is nuts. Yeah, I don't see any like subtitles, so I'm guessing maybe this is Rising Stars, and this is one that even Warren Bernard said that like he would like to unpack with us. Yeah, I mean, look, you can see it was obviously successful. You know, that's that's a pretty big creative team. Like, those have to sell in order to... Uh, this is not your run-of-the-mill image comics where, like, we're not going to make any money, but maybe the trades will get profitable. It was early enough, too. Um, but in, it was that era where there was such disrespect for comics that people like Jeff Loeb and, and just these, like, outside writers... Like, if you were an outside writer, it gave you more gravitas than the most seasoned comic book writer. So I cast aspersions on that. Uh, but now I have them, and I can read them. Look at that, man. 24 issues. What a run for, like, that time period and where comics were at. Um, probably some nice book collections of this one. And I saw Brent Anderson's name on there, yeah. which makes me think of, like, revisionist-type superheroes such as uh, Astro City. Yeah, totally. It, uh, I believe that uh, in my free little lending libraries in the neighborhood, there's going to be a lot of issue ones of... Rising stars. <laughs> I is, saw. I think I saw eight of them there. Yeah, that is going to show up in uh, 2024. I'm mildly underwhelmed by what uh, what's been being pulled out here at. Yeah, Dave Judgment, Jeff Jones, uh, or Jeff Jones. One of the other things was like these writers who 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 developed some uh, some street cred or or some fandom. Like I don't know any of them. I don't think I ever read a Jeff Johns comic, so I, I fuck with it. Yeah. Boy, I find some of these, uh, this is from a certain period that I found ugly. That's a pretty good creative team, though, um, Azzarello and Rizzo. Absolutely. Um, that would be something, I think, that, that might be really good. Totally. That's a 100 Bullets team. I'd be curious about it, at least. Nice covers, too. Now, like here's the covers. thing. Like, I don't know if you see it's like Broken City 4, 5, 6. Like, I got to this box maybe late. Maybe some, some schmucks, like, came through and bought the first three. So I don't necessarily have it all. You know, as you're flipping through, that's something else that I see where it's like, okay, that looks like a bigger crossover event. You'll see like a branded logo at the top or whatever. And it, I can see how somebody gets tired of this. Right. Like it would be so hard to... I look at these and half the time I'm like, I don't know what order you'd read them in. It feels like it's part of a maybe multi-series storyline. Right. Just really hard to make sense of what you're looking at sometimes. How old do I sound when I say that? <laughs> bunch Guess of Mike, my age, K Fabers. Bunch of Mike Turner uh, Supermans. Interesting stuff. You know, I, I totally never paid any attention to these. Now I got a bunch. I think it came out to 16 cents, so 
I'm not I'm not crying too much. What's uh what oh, Dustin Wynn? I, I I usually find his art attractive, although I don't know if I've actually read any of his books. This is interesting because Steve Epting, Ed Brubaker. I mean, that was like the Captain America team that that found so much success uh, early on there. Right. And just a random issue of Razzle. So strange. You ever read Razzle? I've got the trade, but but I, I remember don't. reading it. I can't remember if it was whenever we interviewed him or another Echo, some, some reason or other. Terry Moore. I would be sorting these if these were my collections. Like I'd be going like, okay, all the avatars, got to put all those together. Right. <laughs> all the echoes, the creator own stuff. This, this is pretty. One. Ed McGinnis, yeah, there's a guy I enjoy looking at. This is pretty sweet, man. Ed McGinnis, inks by Dexter Vines. So we got a little run of these. And I'm a big uh, Ed McGinnis fan. I, I love I love his his artwork. Super and then and then this Pat Lee man. shit where it where it gets it's like cell shaded, you know? Like Pat Lee I find interesting too because I have come across him. I picked up the the rest of the Alan Moore Wildcats and he's got some stuff in there. In, yeah. In an issue. Oh, I was gonna say Michael Turner is who I associate with the what, Superman. Want a copy? I'll take one. Superman Batman, I think he did a, a decent run on here. But Pat Lee worked everywhere. Yeah. Like he did stuff for Liefeld, he did stuff for Jim Lee. I think he might have done Sylvestri Top Cow stuff. Really, uh, quite a history. Yeah, for sure. Here's another bundle for you. Oh, yeah, sweet. I have all of those Dark Minds, I think, is Pat Lee's right. book. Um, those are things that I pulled as I was, uh, you know, over the years buying dollar books, 50 cent books, stuff like that. And it really looks like the cell shaded stuff. Like, I think it's pretty cool looking, but I haven't actually read it. Can and it might be around this time period, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in there. Came across another run, Jimmy. Oh, boy. Got a little run going on. Let me pull. Let me pull the yeah, the Marvel Knight stuff, like, um, ooh, that's a head turner for me. So all the initial shit... The stuff that came in the in the Marvels. These are pretty cool. I know we looked at issue one uh, in a video, but I remember that book making noise. <laughs> he bought into some things, man. Oh man, he bought into some things. But we got a long run of this. We got all the multiple issue copies of these. We got all the Smith joints in Quesada, and then it dovetails into. I think this is worth something. This character becomes somebody. I didn't realize Casada continued, and then we got David Mack. I didn't realize that either. I like David Mack stuff. It's not a guy I've read a lot of, but I'm often impressed with the visuals I now see. Ben, now Bendis pops up as, as a writer. Mm -hmm. I remember I lots. had a friend that was reading these, and he would kind of like tell me what was going on, and they usually sounded pretty good. Like I think at some point Murdoch gets thrown in jail, and then the Punisher gets himself arrested to go in with him. Right. <laughs> And I like Malieve's look too. It's, it's. Um, I know he was doing stuff with photos, and it's kind of weird, but also, why not? It's having a consistent team is is half the battle, I think. Want one? No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-five issues so far. This it's might, a big this, run. This might be a run. Yeah, when I think of uh, Bendis, this might be the thing he's most celebrated for. Her. Look, um, look at maybe what everywhere. Look what they're doing, having like legacy numbers. Yes. With uh, the Marvel Knights numbers. So weird. Who takes over? The writer that takes over is it? Brubaker that replaces Bendis. Uh, I remember see. people liking that run too. Uh, it ends with sixty for me. Okay. So I can't tell you. That's kind of cool. I would be curious if you read a couple of these, see what you uh, what you make of them. I'm, I'm very interested in it, and, it, it, and it's a big part of why I scooped up the box. Yeah, I would be tempted to buy a collection at a cheap price for that because I do remember these books being like people liked them. Yeah. And, you know, Daredevil, man. You can certainly do Daredevil right, so they could be really good. And I like Mac and um, Maliv. Wow. We end kind of strong. I'll tell you what, a good shape Hellboy one. The original that'll, City of Destruction. That'll pay for your collection, wouldn't it? I think so, man. That's the stuff that I told him. I'm like, dude, these are worth way more than a dollar. And he's like, yeah, whatever. So, and, and you know what? We need to look at, we need to do Seed of Collection as a complete piece. It's funny. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how much stuff, Wake, Wake the Devil, uh, pretty good. 
But then I wonder if you get into like Conquer or Worm was the one where I was like, oh, I'm in. I'm totally in. Up to that point, I was kind of like on the fence. But man, that, that he, got me. He gets deep, man. Because like it's not all just in this box. These are great, too. I always like when Mignola was doing these like two issue runs, it seemed like artistically he grew some there. And I don't know if it was the size of the stories or, or why, but those always spoke to me. That's kind of cool. Well, That's the color August version. Collection? Yeah, you guys should check out our Wolves of St. August, the uh, original printings, if you haven't seen that video already. These are really great. The 25 cent issue. Mm -hmm. we, we did a video on that. Yeah, it's also in his uh, artist edition and just a fantastic piece. Love this. This this was my prime, like, Mike Mignola Hellboy era. Yeah. Some auxiliary stuff. Ape Sapien joint. Ghost Hellboy. Who's drawing? Hmm. Don't know the name. I thought it might have been Adam Hughes, but it was not. There you go. That's your uh, Ghost of... Or, I mean, Wolves of St. August. Yes. And, and guess what? These three, I already have. Oh, so these are going to uh, to the uh, cartoonist kayfabe Christmas in July. By the way, King kayfabe or Rob McCallum. Yes, sir. I was messaging with him yesterday, and uh, I don't have this issue, so I'm so glad to uh, finally get that. How much does that white cover pop? So that, much. like three of them are black and one is white. This is a fun book. And and we, I, like at that. You know, I'm sitting here thinking because it's like we should. Uh, but, you know, one of those Frank Miller's has three or four different small stories. Yeah, I think most of those came out of Dark Horse Presents, if I'm not mistaken. A couple more of that Bendis. Uh-oh, guess what, dude? The rest of that Broken City storyline with nice. Azarello Rizzo. So so we're good. We're good with that. Yeah, you should read that one and, and uh, see if it's something to, and to I guess, cover. And I guess maybe I skipped the issue earlier and it just got put shuffled in the in the box a little bit differently. Hellboy Jr., Bill Ray. Wonder if it's all Bill Ray. That Which, might be fun to look through and see, uh, see what kind of talents on those pages. These are neat because of the uh, the painting. Right. You know, I like whenever they would try different stuff, and I, I think that that's that's a painter in there. Bill uh, Ray on our first one, our second Ke one. Kevin Nolan. I see Dave Cooper's name. Hillary Barta. That's pretty. That's a pretty, pretty great collection of talent there. Yeah. Good looking, good looking comic. Unmistakable uh, Dave Cooper. Yeah, definitely. Right there. Looks like he's coloring himself there. Is that the Nolan stuff? I think so. That one. It was just a pin out. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. That's all. Oh, interesting. Is this Mike Mignola then? Wow. Let's see. That's a good look, and that's a cool book. I kind of would remember yeah, when this stuff would come out. You know what would be great is if he had... There was a Hellboy anthology series, like four issues, where different creative teams would do yeah. Hellboy stories. Yeah. If you pull that out of these boxes, I've got one or two issues of that. Cool. And I always think that's something we should cover because um, it's a good talent. You know, it's, it's, it's a way to look at a bunch of artists yeah. in uh, one video that would make sense. We've got two other weird boxes, man. But uh, here's how we'll, we'll, we'll end it. And it's something that I've been wanting to get my hands off for quite a while. Nice. Is, is all five issues... Of Dark Horse 100, uh, I only had this one, so like as a as a whole video, I think that you know like it would be cool to do Dark Horse 100 because what they did was they got their top talent to do stories in here and really try to set it up as like a grand you know centennial. Yeah, it was an event. I wonder if these were released weekly. I bought these. I got rid of them in the purge, and there's something that if I come across, I buy them. I think I have one or two of them now. Yeah. Um, but how about this for, like, you're showing off your legend team. Totally. It's all legend artists. Yeah, it is, huh? Absolutely. There will be uh, P cars in there, uh, all sorts of... This should be a fantastic video. The collection of talent in there is, is quite a list. Right. And it's also a snapshot of that time period. I don't know when this is, but it's probably, like, 99, yeah. 2000... Maybe 98 to 2001, somewhere in there, I that think. That sounds about right. And guess what? Wrightson doing uh, Hellboy. That's so cool, man. I have doubles of this, so that's going to uh, somebody. Let's see, let's see what the year is on this thing. Such a goofy story. Uh, it's, it's 95. 95? Wow. Way earlier than I thought. Yeah, you know what? It is early enough that uh, there was like a little promo magazine that was in Hero Illustrated. That was comic size and stuff, so 
So what does that bring us to? Like six issues for uh, Dark Horse? Yeah, right. 100. So there it is, man. Uh, just a random box of comics of stuff that I had almost no doubles of. And uh, K-Favors, what are the books from from this stash that deserve to get the, the microscope the microscopic treatment on cartoonist kayfabe and at a future date we'll grab another random box i know that i have old man uh, logan in one of them uh all kinds of random shit you know it was so cheap it was so nothing fuck it as long as there's a couple diamonds in the rough dude it's worth it for cartoonist kayfabe it makes me so curious what his 30 boxes of comics contain. I think he's got lots of class, like old stuff and runs, you know? Like, uh, I think he's got a lot of runs of, like, great old... Like, probably, like, every Sandman, every Swamp Thing, every... Like, he's a big Grant Morrison dude, so probably, like, all the Animal Mans and, like, all of that kind of thing. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to see. It's neat how well he takes care of them. And 30 boxes, man, that is nothing to sneeze at. That's yeah. a pretty substantial collection. It makes me wonder, like, did he go through and, like call out these comics or is this just at a certain point he's like i'm done from 95 on <laughs> right, right. You know? yeah this is the mignola's a surprise and, and and he even said so for himself i think he probably upgraded in his mind like with the library editions and stuff i think people do that that would make sense why own multiple versions of it and he's probably right in that regard i would probably choose the comics over right. the the books but Hey, to each his own, and obviously the books are a popular format choice for everybody. Yeah, so looking forward to the comments. Uh, educate us a little bit. We don't know what we don't know. Tell us what the good shit is. Yeah, there should be some fun stuff come in. I'm, I'm curious if Chuck Austin will catch any shrapnel. Oh, man, leave the guy alone. It's been some time. I don't even know anything about that. I don't either. I just about I, I remember people crapping on him, but for that reason, or for that matter, I also remember people crapping on Bendis, so yeah. who knows what will come back from this video. <laughs> K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist K Fabe Patreon is where you can join up to mitigate the K Fabe effect and get all our videos before anybody else. We're going to be at Baltimore Comic Con second weekend in uh, September, but the videos are brought to you ultimately by the books that we make. Jimmy, what do you got? True Crime Funnies. This is my latest self-published comic, three non-fiction stories, including a legit true crime comic, as well as some wrestling tales. Um, this is available digitally right now on my website or at patreon.com slash jimrug, along with a lot of other PDFs of zines and mini comics that are out of print. I will be reprinting that soon, hopefully. Um, my other books that are available right now, wherever you buy books and comics, include Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, back in print from Image Comics, eight complete stories of the homeless ninja on a skateboard. These are action superhero comics suitable for anybody and uh, some of the best comics ever made. So pick this up if you haven't already. The Plain Jane's perfect for the young adult reader in your life. And uh, the Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition. Super proud of this book. Uh, you can see it's oversized, fluorescent green, and really a love letter to both the Hulk and to the creative teams that made the Hulk the character that he is. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you this holiday season. The book is printed. The book is nearly published to the consumer, and I want you to grab it. Uh, 504 pages, 140 pages of material beyond what uh, the first four volumes uh, encompass. A lot of artwork, a lot of artwork done exclusively for this book. Not the only holiday effort that we're putting out. Uh, the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback is coming out. It's going to be a trade paperback size. This is the original Treasury. But there's a Treasury that's out of print. Uh, so if you want to get the comic all in, all in one go, the X-Men Grand Design tr uh, Trilogy trade paperback is the way to do that. And Crypto Killers is the latest season of Red Room Comics. There are three... Uh, series of Red Room comics out there. Trigger Warnings and the Anti-Social Network are two trade paperbacks that are out there. Self-contained stories. You see an issue, give it a read. You dig it, grab another one. It'll be something completely different and uh, all, you know, all-encompassing. You're not going to have to be bogged down with all the other issues. There are going to be four issues total. Three issues are out right now. Jimmy, what else do we have going on? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more comics and we'll see you tomorrow.